Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I thank uh, Mr. Farmer for his question? Um, my response is as follows. Under the standing orders of, uh, of my group, on matters of policy, whilst of course we always listen to the arguments made during the debate in the council chamber before yeah. reaching yeah. a decision, yeah. Yeah. Group, yeah. Members, yeah. group members are expected to vote in line with the view of the group as a whole. The only exceptions to this are matters of conscience defined as religious or temperance issues. Mr Mayor, this is precisely what we did at the Extraordinary Council meeting on the 25th of February. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Scott, do you want to um, ask Mr Farmer, sorry, would you like to ask him supplementary? If as leader of the council, you are convinced of the economic benefits of the Royal Lake development and the use of Greenbelt for this and other developments, can you explain why you would have any concern over not allowing the members of the Labour Party a free vote, whereby they can represent their wards and the views of the people that reside in them? I certainly made my views very well known at the Extraordinary Council meeting on the 25th of um, February about this issue, which was to ask scrutiny to look at all of the issues. But on the specific point, um, I don't accept that this group didn't make a democratic decision. Uh, and I just refer Mr Farmer to the, uh, to the answer I gave uh, to the main question. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah. Rubbish. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Mr Scott, please come forward to ask your question of Councillor Phil Davis, Leader of the Council, which will be responded to on his behalf by Councillor Phil Brightmore, who is the appropriate portfolio holder. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, my name is Neil Scott. I'm Vice President of Brackwell's Golf Club and Captain in 1998. And I ask this question in light of knowledge that I have of private maintenance schemes involvement in golf courses on the Liverpool side of the water. <coughs> At a park, the Warren and Brackham of Golf Course, the latter, should it be placed into the same or similar private investment firm's management, have been in existence for hundreds of years between them. Can the council confirm that these golf clubs that have financially supported and contributed to the success of Wirral's municipal golf courses over that period. The sport in the borough, along with significant financial support to local charities through their activities, be protected and have the same rights to the course at all times and existing facilities in their respective clubhouses. Will the council seek to ensure that the public will continue to have access to the Invigor 8 scheme or a similar scheme for golf with similar terms and costs following lease transfer to any private investment firm. Councillor Brightmore, please provide your response. Thank you for your question, Mr Scott. The rest of the golf clubs at Arry Park and Warrington and Brightmore Municipal Golf Courses have leases with the council. In transferring the golf courses to an alternative operator, these leases will be transferred to the operator as such golf clubs will continue to benefit from existing arrangements in the lease agreements. If Arrow Park and the Warrens are transferred to an alternative operator, the council will seek to negotiate a similar offer to the invigorate offer with the new operator. Similarly, if Bracknell Golf Course were to follow a similar route to Arrow Park and the Warren Golf Course, the council would seek to negotiate a similar offer to the invigorate offer with the new operator. Mr Scott, would you like to ask a supplementary? <coughs> That hasn't been the case over in Liverpool, councillors. Three golf clubs have been destroyed by a private investment firm who don't want the golf club as part of their plans on the course. Councillor Davis, you will offer any private investment firm the security of their investment by offering a long-term lease on the course. Can you confirm that any negotiations with any private invest investment firm will take into account the golf clubs that need security for their future in terms of course access 
at key times. As current arrangements exist, leases on their respective areas, i.e. the clubhouse or rooms, and the cost of golf that should remain in line with the current council fees for pay and play and invigorate schemes. Thank you. Councillor Brightmore. Thank you, Mr Scott. The views of the golf clubs will be taken into account, of course, and the council is aware of the contribution you've made to the borough over many years. Thank you. Now, Mr Barry Davis, please come forward to ask your question of Councillor Phil Brightmore, Cabinet Member for Leisure and Recreation, which will be responded to on his behalf by Councillor George Davis, who is the appropriate portfolio holder. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My question is to Councillor Brightmore. He responded to an email from Brackenwood Golf Club that stated the following the Open Spaces Review. Brackenwood is likely to follow suit and be transferred to a private investment firm as per Arrow Park and the Warren Golf Course. Why therefore was Brackenwood not originally involved in the proposal for Arrow Park and the Warren, but instead placed into a different Open Spaces Review? What was the criteria used by the council that placed Brackenwood Golf Course and Pulton Recreation Field into this review? Councillor George Davis, your response. Thank you for the uh, question, uh, Mr. Lewis. Um, Captain says this meeting on 23rd of July 2018 agreed to consult on a development options review. This included a list of sites, Appendix 5 of the boards recommended for consultation for potential release from the green belt. These sites were included in this review in light of the assessment against the five green belt tests contained in national planning policy. Green belt serves five purposes. One, to check the unrestricted sprawl of large built up areas. Two, to prevent neighboring towns merging into one another. Three, to assist in safeguarding the countryside from encroachment. Four, to preserve the setting and special character of historic towns. And five, <coughs> to assist in urban regeneration by encouraging the recycling of Delaware and other urban land. Brackenwood Golf Course and Putin Recreation Ground are referred as SPO 38 and 39. And in the published consultation information, it has a notice to say protect these sites as they are currently in use as a golf course and recreation ground. The consultation took place in late 2018 and the council published the consultation responses on the 28th of February 2019. The council has not made any decisions on future development options at this time, but it will consider these further later this year as the local plan progresses. The Greenbelt boundary can only be altered in exceptional circumstances and through the local plan and uh, statutory process following examination by an inspector. As this process is ongoing, the council cannot say what the outcomes of this will be in inland use terms. David, do you to supplementary? Thank you. So, Mr Marsh, please come forward to ask your question of Councillor George Davis, Cabinet Member for Housing and Planning. Mr Mayor, Councillors, uh, thank you for your time. I'm the Secretary of Brackenwood Golf Club and uh, a past captain. Um, Brackenwood Golf Course adjacent to Peter Price's Lane, Brackenwood Road, Bracken Lane, Brackenwood Park at the same location and Portland Recreational Field south of Stanton Road, been identified on the Council's own website as protected areas. An email and several supplementary emails sent to the leader and deputy leader who have failed to communicate with me as secretary of Brackenwood Golf Club and yeah, representative yeah. of its membership on the issues raised in these emails has required my attendance here this evening. My question remains the same as the one posed in my emails and directly relates to the fact that these areas are under a Greenbelt Spaces Review and have been identified on another area of the council website the forward planning tool that includes a map of the area identifies these areas under development options review as sites for further investigation. Can the council confirm that these areas, one of which are several covenants between the council and Leader Brothers dating back to 1933, will not, following any such review, be released for any housing, development or other commercial use 
outside of their current use and explain what these sites for further investigation mean. Councillor George Davies, your response. Thank you, Mr. Uh, the Cabinet report on the 23rd of July 2018 on the development options review sets out the background to this matter. Sites for further investigation mean sites that potentially may be released from the Green Belt as part of Willow's local plan. The Council consulted on development options in 2018 and published the results of the consultation on the 28th of February 2019. These comments will be taken into account as the local plan progresses. As the work is still ongoing and no decisions have yet been taken, then the Council cannot at this time comment on future land uses. But the message from one of our directors, uh, Mr. Bull, uh, says that if Mr. Marsh wishes to meet with me to discuss the planning position, then I am very happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marsh, no supplementary? Thank you. Just take Ron for all the advice. So now we move on to item 6, leaders, executive members and chairs reports. Item 6 on pages 5 to 32 of the agenda, 5 to 32 of the agenda, contains the reports of the executive members and the overview and scrutiny chairs. Cabinet members and scrutiny chairs will not present their reports, which will be taken as read, and the council is invited to receive and note these reports. There will be an allocated maximum of 45 minutes of questions to the leader, cabinet members and chairs. These questions must be confined to the contents of the reports and can be asked in any order. Questioners, please ensure that your question is no longer than two minutes and you may only ask one question to one member at any one time. The total number of questions on any of these reports will not exceed five. Now, are there any questions which councillors wish to ask in respect of these reports? Councillor Chris Blake. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question to Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth, Councillor Angela Davis. Can the Cabinet Member tell us whether she had any concerns when she was consulted by the Chief Executive over the appointment of Stuart Halliday as an interim director? Mm -hmm. Councillor Angela Davis. Um, no, at the time I was consulted, no. Councillor Steve Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Another question for Andrew Davis, Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth. In my world of Northern West and Sober Massey, residents are often highly critical of the council in that they believe that most money goes to Birkin Head and that more than frequently uses loses out. Cabinet <coughs> Member's report starts with highlighting the generation to Morton, Bromborough, and Birkin Head. The report then continues with Birkin Head being mentioned ten times. There's not one mention of Morton or Brumborough. Can the Cabinet Member assure me and Morton residents that our fears will not be founded as this report cuts some gas and that the generation in Morton will not be a lower priority than that of the That's Andrew Davis. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for your, for your question. Um, the good thing about World Growth Company is that it is called World Growth Company, not Birkenhead Growth Company. So it is about a whole series of regeneration um, across the borough. Um, of course, it has to um, look at phase one, and it can't do everywhere at once. Um, but very clearly, in, in phase one, um, Morton, Morton is included, and, and there's a whole, you know, um, series of pieces of work that that is ongoing at this time around Morton. So um, it's it's no less important than anywhere else. Councillor Dave Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To uh, Councillor Stuart Whitting, it's in relation to uh, uh, the comments. I was pleased that, due to our ongoing good financial management, we've been able to secure an additional 500,000 through conditions of our own. Could you please explain to the Council what that was and where the re revenue came from? And the second point is, assume that the amount of 5 million for housing rented this time. Will the A41, the major highway, the be actually repaired at the junction of these two Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Councillor Whittingham. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell, for the, the question. 
the five hundred thousand pounds uh, extra capsule allowance, which uh, is going to be spent on our class five roads, and uh, the the capital kind of report for that will be published in due course. Hopefully, before the local elections, it's still in preparation. Um, that's five hundred thousand pounds of capital on, on top of uh, the allocation we've got from the city region. Um, the the capital kind of report pack. Uh, you know, you'll see this for roads. Um, that's a very benefit from the structural maintenance program. Uh, I do believe, I need to check on, uh, I do believe that the Forty One is mentioned in that, it's uh, about to check on the expense uh, we're about to go. Councillor Pat Hatton, isn't it? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, a question for the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth, Councillor Andrew Davis. Uh, Angela, you will, you will be aware of the recent uh, success of the joint uh, scrutiny uh, committee meetings. Um, in business and environment. Uh, to hear more about the World Growth Company with the preferred development news in attendance, it was a very positive and worthwhile first step, as I'm sure members who were present would agree. Uh, I know she shares my passion to ensure that further and regular all member sessions will take place, and it was also refreshing to hear the timetable for the residence consultation due to start shortly, which of course are all vital elements to make sure. Like all regeneration, people there. Potentially, give us more information, please, about the consultation. Thank you very much. Councillor Andrew Davis. Uh, thanks, thanks very much, Pat, for your good question. Um, I believe it was an excellent um, uh, joint business and environment open with scrutiny committee um, session with me, and I want to thank you for the chair and that as well. So, in terms of the growth company consultation, I want to make sure that residents, community groups, businesses and elected members all have the best opportunity to respond um, and take part. It's vital that um, as many people as possible um, have their say and feed, it, feed into the consultation um, their ideas and to help shape this exciting new generation going forward. The consultation will start after PERDA. Um, and following on from the joint overview and scrutiny session, we've extended the consultation period from three months um, up to six months so that we can make sure it's a really full and detailed um, consultation. So we'll be holding um, a series of events, uh, workshops, uh, resident and business drop-in events, and we're also looking at a postal survey as well. And there will be um, a consultation website and information available at every council building in Sarnix. Thank you. Councillor Tom Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is to the cabinet member for adult care and health concerning her reports about people living healthier lives. Um, I'm sure she is aware that this council appointed <coughs> Councillor Kate Cannon as a governor of the Camp of Castlebridge Cancer Centre NHS Foundation Trust. In light of the recent revelations that Councillor Cannon was struck off the Nursing and Midwifery Council um, for persistent dishonesty and serious patient failing, does she feel that this um, that Councillor Cannon is the appropriate person? <laughs> no, sorry, does she feel it's the appropriate person to be appointed? And if she does, how does she feel um, this council, how would you advise this council to move forward? Sorry, Mary. Uh, questions that are uh, go to the heart of uh, people and their personal lives outside of this chamber is not a policy matter that falls within the report. I would sort of like to point to exactly what part of the report would go to uh, individuals' reputations in that manner. Uh, that's a discussion to be had uh, elsewhere with the form group leaders, group leader, uh, and if necessary in the standards committee. And it's usually considered inappropriate for such comments in for change. Mr. Mayor, I refer to under the report people living healthy lives, um, as, I, as I outlined. This isn't about personal, it's about professional life. It's in the public domain. And I think it's about the public domain. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As stated, uh, the competence or otherwise of members once they are elected to this chamber to sit on a committee uh, is down to the group uh, and is not uh, a matter that should be for discussion here 
but without having first gone through a uh, standards committee or some other process. Uh, this is a chamber for uh, debate of policy and holding the cabinet members to account for their formulation and implementation of that policy, uh, not uh, the personal characters of members concerned. Councillor Phil Davis. Okay. I uh, think we should take heed of the borough solicitor's advice and move on to the next question, Mr. Mayor. But it's a good question. Councillor Leslie Rennie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My, my question is to Councillor Stuart Whittingham, um, the Cabinet Portfolio of Highways and Transport. Uh, Councillor Whittingham, I'm delighted to read in your report that uh, very soon we will be updated as to the programme to replace every street light in the borough with the new energy efficient uh, LED bulbs. Um, but in the meantime, could he perhaps join with me in thanking an unsung hero of this borough, um, Mr. Simon Gray, who you will remember came to this council meeting and asked you a number of questions in relation to how many street lights were unlit. Um, perhaps um, with the help of obviously what Mr. Gray has shown you, can you now inform this council about how many street lights to to date, we may unlit. Councillor Whittingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Given there's only 30,000 streetlights, so I'll have to give you a bit of answer later. <coughs> <coughs> Councillor Moylan Crossley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And a related question, just by chance. Um, the Cabinet member will be uh, sorry, it's a question to the Cabinet member for Highways and Transportation. Uh, the Cabinet member will be aware that on numerous occasions over the winter months, I reported street lighting repairs that have remained outstanding for weeks, often months, and in one case over a year. I've also asked why previous reports by residents of these required repairs have been removed from the CRM system without any action being taken, leaving residents both figuratively speaking and literally in the dark. I have not as yet had even an acknowledgement, never mind a response, to the request I made nearly three weeks ago to the director and yourself for a report on how many lights are out currently in Rock Ferry and for how long each one has been outstanding. <coughs> Could you please tell me what is being done to give better information to residents on the CRM system, when residents can expect a better standard of service with regard to street lighting repairs, and when I can expect the report I've asked for? <laughs>
view to preparing a, a report for members. As I said in the debate we had uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I think it's quite right, right and proper that that's in the public domain and scrutinised by the student committee. I would estimate, I'm not precise, date, David, that that will be available in the next couple of months. Thank you. Councillor Sharon Jones. Okay, so thank you for that question, Sharon. Um, yet we've now gone up to consult on our proposal to reduce uh, 9,000 households council tax bills. Um, this decision was arrived at for a number of reasons, uh, ostensibly that this uh, Conservative governments are absolutely uh, pernicious in the, in, the, in the way that they have treated working age people, they have pushed working age people into poverty. Poverty with, uh, is preserved. We banks are dealing with people who are working as opposed to just people who aren't working. Well, welfare reform, of course, has had a massive impact on our poorest households. And while we might think it's a smiling matter, I certainly don't think that. Okay. It also ties in with our community wealth building. I have to say, Pat, uh, it's great that you expressed such an interest in our community wealth building strategy, which I think you said was uh, sort of almost tokenistic. Um, I'm pleased to hear that you're really interested in it, but you've never spoken to me about it once or emailed me, so perhaps that might be a first start. Okay, so just to reiterate, yeah, 9,000 people. Well, you know, you just say you're really interested in having for many years. I don't think from you as I'm leaving on it, just goes a bit off. Anyway, so we will be helping 9,000 households here who are on the move with their council tax bills. Thank you. Councillor Cherry Powell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is for um, Cabinet Member for the Environment, Anita. I know we've had uh, a long discussion tonight about the kingdom, uh, but the question I'd like to ask is can you advise how much is owed by kingdom to the council for cancelled or unpaid factors, please? Sorry, I, I didn't hear what it said. How much is owed? Oh, yes. Sorry, how much is owed to what? To the council for cancelled or unpaid fines. I'm not really sure that I understand the question, to be honest with you. In terms of cancelled fines, uh, fines are cancelled for a reason, and that could be that the person uh, is maybe uh, their age is not um, understood at the time of it being an issue, so they may be underage, etc. So there's numerous reasons why. Uh, they would be cancelled, but they've justified reasons why. And your other question was? <coughs> unpaid. Unpaid. I haven't got the value of any unpaid at this present time. But obviously we've terminated the, um, the uh, contract and we've got some uh, negotiating to do in terms of outstanding amounts at this point in time, but I don't have the actual value. Mm -hmm. I can write to you if you wish me to. And everyone else. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor David Elderson. Yes, sir. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, although I have retired from the council with a fact from the next month, I'm still passionately interested in Green Dow's issues and I always have been all my life. So my question really is to George Davis, Housing and Community Safety of uh, Cabinet Member. Can you please tell me, George, when will the results of the Green Belt consultation be made available? These were promised in December and then February and it just seems to be slipping. But I'd really like to have some idea of when that consultation will be broadcast to us all. Thank you, George. Thank, Thank you, you, George. George. Yes. 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 Thank you for your question. Um, they should be out now. Councillor Paul Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This question is to the Cabinet Member for Environment, Councillor Anita Lee. Can the Cabinet Member please advise what happens now if a member or a member of the public submits a request for action for a thought filing in the borough? Councillor Anita Leach. 
Uh, thank you for your question. Um, as you know, uh, by terminating the contract with Kingdom, who did the enforcement for us, we don't currently have an enforcement team to do that. Um, as I've said, that we will be looking at taking this back to scrutiny to look at the best possible way to go forward with this. But in the meantime, our street cleansing team will cleanse the streets as they normally do in terms of dog family. Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Question to the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth. Uh, it's widely reported that the authority has spent £7 million on buying the site of the new cinema in Burton Head. We understand that excludes the cost of releasing the view from their lease. Can the Cabinet Member tell us when negotiations with the view will be concluded and when we will be told how much the Council has paid the view to be released from the lease on the land of us? Councillor Davis. Um, in terms of this specific question you asked then about the about the view cinema, um, we've uh, purchased that because in order to regenerate Birkenhead Town Centre, that's a really important part of the, the footprint. Um, so I, I'll have to come back to you on the on the rest in terms of the specific negotiations. I've not got that detail, but I just wanted to say it was important that we we purchased that because a growth company. Um, for, our, for our budget next year is, is bringing in over five million pounds. So I, I think if you're thinking about things long term, it's an investment well made. Councillor Tony Cox. Sorry, I'm sorry, George Davis there, so it's the same microphone on a planet sitting on. Uh, question to um, um, Adam Golfer and um, Current leader of the council, uh, Phil Davis, with regards to where uh, golf resorts. Uh, could the leader please clarify who will be funding the bypass road? Uh, the Nicholas Joint Venture Group are saying that the resort will require no more uh, further public funding. Yet in the report to cabinet in December 2017, it was made clear that the road will either be funded by a grant uh, from Liverpool City Region or from the sale of land, so publicly owned land, and therefore the receipts clearly will be public money. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Oh, Councillor Bill Davis. Yeah. Um, sorry, Mr. Uh, thanks. Thank you for the question, Councillor Cox. Uh, all of those questions and those issues will become uh, will be included in the report uh, once the officers have had an opportunity to analyse the funding. Uh, package and the funding proposal that the developers brought forward, and there will be ample opportunity for scrutiny members to scrutinise those issues. As I said to uh, Councillor Curtis Judge, when it comes back to scrutiny, probably in a couple of months' time. Thank you. Councillor Andrew Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, further question to the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth, Councillor Davis. Uh, with regards again to the view cinema, can the cabinet member inform us as to the valuation method that was employed to value the cinema at £7 million and the independent advisor and valuer who advised the council on this occasion? Councillor Angela Davis. Um, I'll send you a written reply. Councillor Stuart Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A question to the cabinet member for the environment, or further to the question posed by. Uh, Councillor Hayes, um, my reading of the contract, and I should give correct me if I'm wrong, uh, means that the transfer of undertakings regulations will be applied, uh, better known as 2B, uh, which presumably means that the staff that were employed up to the severance of the contract by uh, Kingdom have now been transferred under 2B to the employment of the council. Could you confirm whether that's the case and that that transfer has currently taken place? And if we do have now on our books, as it were, um, at least 10 uh, former waste, waste um, sorry, litter and dog file wardens, could she advise what she's asked them to do in the written age? Councillor Rita Leach. Thank you for your question. In terms of 2P, I've just actually advised you that we don't have an enforcement, but that we terminated the contract with, um, with Kingdom. So therefore, until we've actually done the review and we decide which way we're going to go forward, we won't be doing enforcement as I previously stipulated. So once we've had the review, we'll know which is the best way forward 
and then we'll decide what, what way we're going to uh, operate enforcement. If we do, if, if we do actually operate enforcement, because I think I've heard from these changes today, we need to educate people. Councillor Chris, I'd ask specifically whether the, the provisions of 2 and 5 and whether employees from Kingless had been 2 be crossed, and I, I await a response to that. Councillor Andrew Davis. Sorry, Councillor Neeson Lee, I don't beg your pardon. Yes, 2 uh, does apply. So, on that basis, as I've said before, we will review how we're going to take this forward. And we have to quickly do it. How many questions am I being asked here? Well, just the one. Several down members. Um, so, have I answered your question? No, no, no. Okay. Well, I, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that I've heard that answer that GP applies which presumably means they've been too big to cross. Now, if they're in our employment, what are they doing? That's the leash. Thank you. Um, two people would apply if we brought the enforcement in-house. Okay? So, what we've said is that we will be looking at what way we're going to manage this going forward. So, currently, two people does not apply. Councillor Bruce Berry. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have a question for um, Cabinet Member for Housing and Community <coughs> Safety, Councillor George Davis. Uh, George, uh, can, can you tell us uh, or confirm that bringing empty homes back into use counts towards any targets within the local plan? There seems to be a great deal of confusion. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor George Davis. Um, I'm not saying you caught the house at all, Bruce, but because I honestly believe that I think it does, but I'm not 100 percent certain and I would like to say in this change tonight that well, I've got a funny feeling it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, no. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is to the Cabinet Member for Children and Families, um, Councillor Bernie Mooney. Um, I'd just like to start off by saying um, a massive congratulations to the achievement that Bernie has made in children's services um, and any improvement, and I recognise the future inspections will be as a result of the hard work from Councillor Bernie Mooney. I'd just like to ask Bernie Mooney if she could inform the Council today. Um, of progress made with regards to social workers and having more social workers that are employed by the local authority and not agency and um, if it, she could give an update on what we expect the outcome of the future offset um, visit to be. Councillor Bernie Okay, um, first of all thank you Paul um, and, and thanks everybody here. You know, this may not have been my choosing, but it's, uh, I'm going on to pastures new and quite a, a, a bright project that I'm going to be leading for Age UK, which I'm really looking forward to. But I need to, before I answer the question, I need to thank <coughs> basically everybody in this room because um, the 20 million <coughs> that was given to children's services came at a cost to everybody um, and it's been really appreciated and we couldn't move forward without that 20 million pounds really. Um, so. You know, we need to thank the members here, we need to thank 